Today's presentation is by Prasanna Bitkar from Rupating, and he's also an independent analyst managing equity portfolios for H&I and retail clients. Before this, Prasanna was head of research at Pentad Securities and was also head of research at Dalal Street Investment Journal. He has over 17 years of experience and has conducted over 200 investor awareness programs with industry stalwarts on a pan-India basis. We are very lucky to have Prasanna with us this time. Please take it away. Thank you, Harsh. Today, we are going to take a look at Tata Chemicals. A lot of restructuring has happened over the last three to four years, whether it is fertilizer segment, which was a drag on their cash flows, or another segment, which was a consumer division, consumer products. So they had given it to Tata Global Beverages, and that restructuring has resulted in a lot of misconceptions about the business model of the company. So what is the investment thesis for Tata Chemicals? Now that restructuring is over, there will be a sharper focus on their core business. The core segment has given good growth in last one and a half year and we expect that to happen in future as well. So when they restructured and exited fertilizer business and even consumers business, they have introduced two new segments to their business and those businesses have a good growth potential. Apart from that, the base business of Caustic Soda and Soda Ash is also going to provide help in terms of volumes and even in pricing. We are expecting turnaround in the financial metrics of both the segments in terms of high growth and apart from that, we are expecting margin expansions. And the combination of this will be resulting in valuation rating of the company. So let's first understand the product profile of the company. We have bifurcated their products into different segments. So the red one are demerged and the current company are shown in blue, dark blue and yellow icons. So salt, baking soda, pulses, spices and ready package. This division was demerged and it was given to Tata Global Beverages in FY20. So right now the segments they have are soda ash, caustic soda, sodium bicarbonate, pesticides, Apart from that, there are new segments added, highly disparable silica and lithium ion and prebiotics, which are going to be the growth drivers for this company. So we can divide their segments into two basic parts, basic and speciality. Now that basic and speciality are subdivided into three parts. One is material, second is nutrition and third is agriculture. Now in agriculture, they have pesticides and seed business, which comes under a listed entity called rallies a complete distinct entity and in Tata Chemicals, the focus will be on the materials and nutrition business. So in materials, the basic chemicals will be soda ash, caustic soda and sodium bicarbonate. And in specialty materials, it will be silica, which is used for tires, rubbers and other silicon items. Now in nutrition, sodium bicarbonate is a larger segment, but when it comes to specialty, prebiotics and formulations will be a major growth driver for the company. So in simple terms, two segments having three different sub-segments and going ahead, speciality segment is expected to be a growth driver. Apart from that, core volumes and price rise are expected to come from the basic segment. Look, whenever we invest in a company, we look for a management quality and management quality is defined by the capital allocation done by that management. We have seen over the years, Tata Chemicals has constantly introduced new products, new segments and have successfully run them over the years. But whenever they found that there are certain segments which are drag on profitability or cash generation, restructuring and divestment has been done by the company. Like in FY17, they, they divested urea business. Apart from that, in FY18, divestment of fertilizer business was done and capital was added to build new capacities for prebiotic plant and they acquired one silica plant. So this is very positive factor and shows the capability of management in terms of capital allocation. Taking decisions to close and exit few sectors and enter new sectors is very important and Tata Chemicals has done that. Apart from that, in FY20, they demerged consumer product business. Now, a lot of queries were raised regarding what kind of growth Tata Chemicals would have if a set of business is being given to Tata Global Beverages, which is now Tata Consumer Limited. But again, company has focused on its core business and added two new segments, as we mentioned, material and nutrition, and that is considered as a growth part for the company. As we mentioned, it can be divided into three sub-segments that is materials, nutrition and agriculture. 
So in materials, what are going to be the growth enablers? So it is going to be differentiated portfolio of specialty silica based on the patented technology. Now this patent works in favor of the company and specialty silica is going to be the growth driver. When we speak about high dispersible grade silica, which is used for tires and rubber application, they have got approvals from various tire manufacturers. Now what they have done in terms of progress and effort is they increase their capacity utilization at their Kodalur plant and apart from that successful trials of HDS and commercialization is expected very soon. So once this happens, a lot of volume growth is expected and in FY22, their capacity utilization and the operating leverage would be much higher. There are few risks associated with this like long gestation period and tire manufacturing having slow demand or lower demand. But these are cyclical sectors and once we see that the growth picks up in automobile sector as well, it's going to provide a lot of traction in material segment. In the nutrition segment, it is the only FOS manufacturer in India and has got expertise in formation technology. Now, FOS are kind of prebiotics which is used for formulation and so solution for the nutritional purposes. In global market, there are much larger players who are providing this substance. But in India, Tata Chemicals is the only manufacturer and heavy expertise in this. Now their Nellore plant is operational and US FDA, which is required is being registered for exports as well. So not only India, they are going to make exports for this as well. And this will result in increased capacity utilization, which is only at 43 to 45% right now. And this will be resulting in higher margins as well. Now in agriculture, as we mentioned, it is a, a completely separate entity, which is listed and that is Rallys India. It has got a very diversified portfolio and good brand loyalty with Rallys having a pan India network. Apart from that, they have launched new crop care formulations and capacity expansion projects are on track. And this is going to be a major driver for the company. Few of the risks associated with agriculture are regulatory changes and restriction on active ingredients and issues with monsoon. But company has been in this segment for decades and uh, they'll be able to cope up with this. Let's see what are going to be the drivers for this. They are the third largest soda ash manufacturers and the sixth largest soda bicarbonate manufacturers. But in material segment, they are going to maintain their leadership in soda ash and focus on maintaining cost competitiveness. In last three to four quarters, costing has increased a lot in terms of energy prices, coal prices, and not many were able to pass on that cost to the consumer. But Tata Chemicals has managed to do that and they are able to sustain their margins. So that is an advantageous point as compared to the peers. In materials, the focus will be on scaling performance, silica, nanomaterials, uh, and other portfolios to be the future growth drivers for this segment. In nutrition, salt portfolio and food and pharma grade biocraft are going to provide volume growth. Look, they are going to expand into nutrition products and extraction from fermentation and other platforms. A very niche segment and in India, we don't have larger market now, but everyone is looking at the size of the fish. But one should look at the size of the pond where the opportunity is much larger. And as the pond size increases, the size of fish also increases. So nutrition segment is going to be another growth driver for the company going ahead. As about the agriculture, new product development and crop protection and crop nutrition and seeds are going to be drivers for this. Now, what kind of CAGR we are expecting from the nutrition plus HDS sales? So you can see from the chart that in FY21, it was around 1530 crore. And in FY24, we are expecting it to be four to five times of what it was in FY21. And if we add these along with rallies, which is agricultural segment, there will be more than 20% CAGR, which, which they are expecting. And nutrition plus material segment, profitability is expected to increase. Look in FY21, at the EBITDA level, they were making losses. And in FY22, the losses are expected to get reduced. And in FY23, it is expected to turn profitable at the EBITDA level. And two to three years from now, profitability will be almost doubling from FY23. I will try to put one more segment, energy segment, which is actually a part of materials business, which is recycling of lithium ion batteries and EV batteries. 
there is a market potential of more than 2500 crore of electrical vehicles in next 5 years and tata chemicals would be a part of it right now as compared to other segments the contribution would be lower but as the base for electrical vehicles increases this will be providing a major traction to the company's product portfolio we mentioned about the new segment which are going to be the growth drivers but base business has also got multiple triggers So as we mentioned, uh, soda ash and sodium bicarbonate are the major base products for this company. So if we look at last two years, soda ash volumes are picking up, and they are now better than pre-COVID levels. And we are expecting that it is going to up in FY twenty three and FY twenty four as well. And apart from that, volume growth is being achieved by the company. In terms of prices, also we can see in FY twenty two price hikes are already being taken. One was taken in the second quarter, and rupees four thousand per ton is being taken in the third quarter. So, along with the volume growth, price hikes shows a sustainable growth in the basic core segment of the company. Apart from that, one major advantage that company enjoys is geographical diversification. Look, they are present in India, US, Kenya, China, Europe. so even if one geographic place is not performing others are providing growth in india volumes are already robust and especially from flat and container glass business segment for soda ash apart from that in us also there are higher exports happening in europe we cannot say that there is going to be a very high growth but volumes are consistent as compared to previous year so sustainable volume growth in kenya volumes are higher on the back of improved demand from southeast asia so all four geographies are performing good in terms of volume growth another outlook is in china domestic players are not keen on exporting so it is adding a lot of new market for the company in europe stable demand and production cycle is there again in turkey exports grew at 15% year on year basis and because of the entries into markets like south america and southeast asia this market is also expected to grow at a rapid pace now more than 10% or double digit growth is always considered good in terms of exporting market now let's come to the financials of the company so basic chemistry revenue we have seen 22% growth and is expected to continue going ahead as well in terms of soda ash sales lot of volume growth is witnessed like q2 fy21 we had 744 million tons and in fy22 second quarter it is 946 million tons a 6% growth in sodium bicarbonate sales was seen and salt sales also we have seen 5% growth so on quarterly basis also sales volumes are increasing as we mentioned volume growth is more sustainable and if sustainable volume growth is witnessed despite the price hike that shows the kind of demand your product is witnessing as we spoke about the volume growth in both the speciality and basic segments now try to understand there will be a turnaround in the financials so when we speak about the turnaround in financials since fy16 to fy21 a lot of restructuring has happened fertilizer segment was exited and even consumer segment was separated from the company and it was transferred to tata consumer and it affected company's financial matrix so revenues witnessed a cagr of minus 8% EBITDA also got affected, which was negative six percent, and profitability with consumer division actually resulting in better profitability and being given to Tata Global Beverages. It was affected more, and CAGR of negative eighteen percent was seen. But we feel here on there are going to be only positives. So from FY twenty one to FY twenty four, one can expect around fourteen percent CAGR in terms of revenues with improved margins, as we suggested with capacity utilization and operating leverage playing out. EBITDA is expected to witness a CAGR of twenty twenty three percent, and PAD growth is expected to be much higher at seventy five percent. so when we are speaking about specialty chemicals in fy16 and 17 the contribution to revenue from specialty segment was only at 23 to 24% and going ahead we are expecting it to be around 38 to 40% so as the specialty chemicals which is a high margin business is expected to add to the top line we expect same is being added to the bottom line as well
but let's understand what were the factors which had affected the margins what happened was a lot of impact was seen on the margins and that was because of gas prices had gone up substantially even the coal prices including freight had gone up almost four times and even carbon prices witnessed a lot of increase and combination of these three factors resulted in lower margins and while gas prices and coal prices are one factor increase in cost of raw salt was was also higher because of excessive rainfall as we mentioned in terms of agricultural segment also that excessive rainfall had provided with the company with a good opportunity it came as a negative factor when they actually bought out raw salt so combination of all four factors had affected the margins but worst is behind and from here on only positive factors are expected so let's see what are the improvements expected so first the free cash flow is expected it to be improving which is less than 1000 crores right now we're expecting it to be between 10 to 12000 crores and that is what is going to add in terms of putting own cash in capacity expansion for the new segments and this will result in a lot of debt reduction if we take a look at current level in fy21 debt to equity ratio stands at around 0.3 and one can expect with good cash flow generation and company paying back their debt it will be reducing to 0.1 by 2024 in terms of financials for fy21 we have seen the lowest return on equity and going ahead every fiscal we are expecting improvement and fy24 we won't be surprised if it is between 7 to 8% so improvement on volume front margins front and overall financial performance so definitely is going to have an impact on the valuation part as well so we have bifurcated their current valuation in four parts one is india second is europe third is north america and the fourth one is rallies so methodology we have used is ev to ebitda which we have put in billion and we are considering fy24 as a year we look at so for india valuation we have 11.7 billion and putting a very conservative multiple of 14x the total valuation comes rupees 164 billion the last column shows what is the valuation per share right now north america and india are going to be the highest weightages and even euro which comes to around rupees 90 and rallies we are expecting that with a fair value of 51 billion in total the per share value comes in around 80 rupees so enterprise value we are expecting from all these segment is rupees 1250 we need to reduce the debt part by 58 billion and the minority interest of 9 billion and pension liability of 15 million so in total around rupees 320 will be reduced from rupees 1250 but again as we mentioned cash flow generation would be good so rupees 150 per share will be cash on the balance sheet and investments are around rupees 130 so this brings us to implied fair value of rupees 1200 as against the current market price of rupees 935 the markets at current juncture people are not very happy with 20 to 25 or 30% growth but let me tell you 14 to 16% cagr on any investment gives a good return or that should be seen as a sensible return from any investment and we feel tata chemical with strong management bandwidth a very strong scalable and sustainable business model give a good opportunity to enter at this level and target price of rupees 1200 is what we look at so we are expecting good valuation re-rating sustained volumes and pricing growth in base chemicals and faster than expected scale up in the specialized business there are going to be few risks any higher input cost will be putting pressure on the profitability but company has been able to take price hike and that hasn't affected their volume growth lastly capital allocation plays a very important role and has been very good they have exited where they were making losses and despite giving away the consumer product segment margins were sustained so that shows the ability that whatever product or segments they are launching they are able to scale it up with a sustainable volume growth so we feel a valuation re-rating is on the cards and we won't be surprised if a, a faster growth in terms of profitability is witnessed in fy23 and 24 as well thank you and i will open the floor for questions